Health Network Kenya and right next to Innocent is Robina Anene. Robina, thank you so much for finding time. A reproductive Health Coordinator, Nairobi City County. Robina, before I ask you where we are at as a county now that we're in Nairobi County, yeah. where do we stand when you're talking about contraception as a country compared to the global stage in terms of the uptake, appreciation, you know, demystifying the myths as well as assuring the people that they are getting quality and safe contraception? Um, where we stand as a country currently, um, and, and just looking at it against uh, some, some of the countries around uh, in Africa here, we are doing quite well. Um, the uptake for the modern contraception, speaking, beginning with the demand itself, in Kenya we are doing 76%, mm -hmm. which is quite very good. Um, it's a good in, improvement. Yeah. And uh, just looking at the numbers themselves, the uptake has grown quite uh, spontaneously. Uh, around 2012, when, they do, we, we, when you look back at KDHS, mm. the numbers were doing around 4 million, the uptake among women, right. uh, among women that is uh, with, with regard to the demand. So the uptake was around 4 million, but right now we're doing 6.4 million. So that means that the trend is doing quite well. Okay. Um, the demand has... Uh, the, the gap in demand has really reduced mm -hmm. from around, uh, I think it was 20 something percent, right now it's 14 percent. Yes. And, and I would say we are doing quite very well. And if you compare it with other countries, like uh, look at countries like Malawi, look at countries like Zambia, which have been doing, they're around 81 okay. percent, 82 percent. So Kenya at 76 percent, I would, I would say we are doing quite very well. Okay. And uh, this I would owe it to the amazing support done by the government. And those are just the alignment uh, that the government has been doing in, in, in partnership with the CSOs and just to see to it that they align with the international commitments mm -hmm. and the international declarations. For, for instance, the Family Planning 2030 commitments, where Kenya committed to supporting eight specific commitments. And and the first one was to increase the uptake for modern contraceptives okay. from 58 to 64 percent by 2030. And I would say right now we are doing quite very well. And mm -hmm. I think Robina will speak to that. Yes. The numbers are doing very well. Um, the demand is doing is is very good. Although we are having disparities in our supply, okay. but I would say. It's generally very good. Let us assume that we're talking to an old person back then, and yeah. Chris Robina is coming to you, yeah. even as you tell us where we stand at, you know, mm -hmm. as Nairobi County. Yes. Uh, that, that the oldies, uh, based on tradition and culture and all that, would not understand why we are talking about uptick shooting up mm -hmm. and appreciating that now <coughs> that is doing well, as opposed to for it being, you know, the vice versa. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about the uptick, mm -hmm. I mean, when we're talking about about growth why does it have to be pegged on the uptick on the growth and of numbers of people who are actually taking family planning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, thank you so so much a lot of investment has been done uh, towards the uptake of family planning both at the national and the county's levels mm -hmm. uh, for instance the community uh, health promoters through the community the primary health care uh, model uh, we have invested heavily from the grassroots through the community health promoters to be able to share contraception and family planning uh, messages to the community so that these communities are empowered, mm -hmm. both women and men. Uh, <coughs> we are now encouraging men to be involved in the care of their women mm -hmm. okay. because it is a conversation that bo all, both, of, uh, both of this uh, gender mm -hmm. need to have. Uh, uh, speak to the people at the level of community who would say, you know what, uh, once you get into marriage, mm -hmm. it's the business of procreation. Mm -hmm. Speak to them. <laughs> what are we talking about when we're talking about family planning? We, we are talking about taking responsibility of your own health mm -hmm. because once you are able to take charge of your own space what happens within your own system and allowing your system to be able to uh, allow you a sanity of mind mm -hmm. to allow your body to heal once you have gotten pregnant and delivered a baby or even had an abortion which mm -hmm. was not planned mm -hmm. you are able to <coughs> Uh, heal well and take 
time before you get the next pregnancy. So it's not the misconception so, that it's about telling women, please do not get more babies. Mm. No, 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 no. Mm. Contraception only means that you are taking a break between the current pregnancy, okay. if any, mm -hmm. and planning to get the next pregnancy mm -hmm. when you are ready, both financially psychologically, physically, to be able to take care of the planned pregnancy. Mm -hmm. You are planning yourself to, t uh, to be able to cope with the pregnancy that you are, uh, are planning to have. How is Nairobi faring on? Nairobi is uh, doing well because according to K, uh, KDHS, we are at 2.6% uh, total fertility rate and the contraception prevalence rate is at about 56%. Mm -hmm. uh, our MCPR is actually at 77% compared to the national which is at 76%. At, uh, so the picture is not any different. Okay. There's a positive trajectory <coughs> towards improving uptake, access, and affordability of mm -hmm. contraception family planning in Nairobi County. All right, I am told, and uh, you will confirm that, that uh, indeed there's been a lot of progress in terms of uh, you know, current day contraception compared to what was there back then. Yes. One of the greatest fears that perhaps got women you know, saying that maybe we should not go that way of contraceptives mm -hmm. or family planning and all that is because they... Uh, most of them would complain of side effects and all that. When we're talking about modern day contraception or modern day contraceptives, just how advanced are they today to guarantee, you know, the women out there and even the men, because we're going to get to that conversation, mm -hmm. that indeed they are, you know, taking arrangements that are safe for them. Mm -hmm. Um, speaking about the modern day contraception, and this I think Robino will, 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 will jump in uh, more. Yeah. Um, one of the, the, the critical things that have been looked at is the aspect of ensuring that the woman has got the right information. Mm -hmm. The healthcare provider has got the right information. So when the woman comes, or even the man comes to access that service, mm -hmm. they are first of all given all the information about the contraception, okay. all the pros and the cons about the, the, the contraception. So it's upon the woman or the man to exactly. decide which one I want to take. And at the same time also, uh, with respect to the, to the side effects, you'll realize that there are people who it will react to differently. Mm. For example, there's that person who will tell you, if I take an implant, I may grow fat. Mm -hmm. There's the other person who will not have those side effects. So people react differently and before they take the contraception they are always given all the information about that mm -hmm. and at times even the doctor will go to uh, the extent of trying to test and see which one is compatible with your mm -hmm. with your body okay. and i think that helps very much to en ensure that the woman or the the, the man the person who's coming for the for the service mm -hmm. gets the right service and does not regret that. And so that means in the event that you are under a certain uh, contraceptive, uh, contraceptive, uh, contraceptive method, mm -hmm. then you are you realize that you have some side effects. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to withdraw or perhaps drop it almost immediately and try a different one. Absolutely. Allow me to speak to that. Yes. Because one of the things that I want to assure Kenyans is that contraceptive methods are safe. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so the myths and misconceptions that come along with the uptake of uh, contraception, again, are allayed at all levels of care, mm -hmm. starting from the community. Mm -hmm. okay. And the healthcare providers in our facilities are empowered to be able to support our clients based on which uh, side effect mm -hmm. they present with in our facilities. Mm -hmm. And so we are assuring our clients that all contraceptive methods are safe. Okay. And before we uh, allow you to take a method, we take you through counseling. Mm -hmm. And our approach now is not just on contraception because when you're talking of sexual and reproductive health, mm -hmm. it's not just about pregnancy. Mm -hmm. There are other things that come along like HIV. Right. We, uh, we 
add the component of HIV, we add the component of STI, mm -hmm. and so we handle our clients holistically, okay. not just focusing on contraception. Mm -hmm. And so again, we counsel you eliminating the methods that may not be uh, suitable for you based on how you present to mm -hmm. us. And, and so we don't just uh -huh. provide methods. Okay. We take through the client on a journey mm -hmm. to be able to pick the best method that they are eligible for. Mm -hmm. We have to be reasonably sure that you are not pregnant mm -hmm. before we begin, uh, we start you on a method. Mm -hmm. And so again to your second uh, concern, yeah. whereby if you are on a journey with a method and then at some point uh, you get a side effect, mm -hmm. our gates are always very open. Okay. Okay. Yeah come back to the facilities, present your concern, and the healthcare provider within the facility mm -hmm. will be able to support you. Uh, could this cut across, and, and you know, I know we're talking about our country, but sometimes you find that there are people who are now getting into the contraceptive methods and they have an arrangement, and yes. before you know it, perhaps they have to travel, <coughs> yes. you know, and all that. Mm -hmm. Could they still find similar? Uh, you know, contraceptives, the, uh, you know, to what it is that they have in these different countries. I mean, do we always get to compare what plays out in the country and the global stage? Mm -hmm. Most of the products that arrive in Kenya are available in all the other, um, most of the, 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 the global the, uh, the countries okay. across the world. Mm -hmm. So we can assure you that all these methods that are available here are also accessible mm. in the other uh, countries. Okay. Yes. And yes. we're talking about meats, and, and, and it's a good thing that you're dealing with youth and across, you know, at, at, at the country stage. Mm -hmm. We are talking about uh, misconceptions, uh, you know, fears mm -hmm. as a big concern, and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that they to get to deter the progress and all that. How much more is the economic factor a deterrent to this process of getting the uptake to grow? Um, looking at uh, the aspect of the economic factor, I would say currently most of the contraceptives are, that are available are very affordable. Mm -hmm. They are very, very affordable. Okay. Um, just beginning the basic ones like the male and the female condoms, mm -hmm. they're very affordable, they're very accessible. You can get them anywhere you want, even in supermarkets. Mm -hmm. um, we have others that have come on board, like the, 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 we have the, now the Cyana Press. It's also very accessible. Right. And, and you realize that accessing these commodities, um, many a times, even at government facilities, you can get some of them at mm -hmm. free of charge. Mm -hmm like the male condoms, you can get them free of charge. Yeah. And, and, and during w when they're having maybe uh, activities at the facilities, you can also get those services. So when it comes to the aspect of the, com the, the economic aspect of it, it's quite affordable. Uh, where the challenge comes in, I would say, is for those individuals who come from the hard to reach areas. So probably the problem this person will have is the distance to cover from their home to the facility. Okay. But accessing the commodities with the affordability, they are very affordable. The only, maybe something that would just hinder them, probably the distance. Mm -hmm. But accessing them, I would say currently we are doing very well. Okay. And so what needs to come out loud again and clear is that in all government facilities, mm -hmm. especially the basic facilities, mm -hmm. level two, mm -hmm. level three, and some level fours, okay contraceptives and family planning methods are free. Okay. Yeah. That needs to be lauded. Mm -hmm. uh, what is charged maybe in the private and faith-based is the service of exactly. offering the commodity mm -hmm. because some of them actually we support them with commodities mm -hmm. and so when we give you free our expectation would be that you support the communities for free, for free. Mm -hmm. the other uh, uh, approach towards access is postpartum family planning post pregnancy okay. family planning mm -hmm. The women who have already had a pregnancy, for as long as we are sure that you do not, your uterus is empty, we are able to deliver the baby, deliver the placenta, and load you with a method. Okay. Immediately, Immediately. before you mm -hmm. step down off the couch. All right. And that conversation again begins early.
-hmm. That conversation begins early. Must be told early. that this is, yes. yeah. That these methods are available, we engage with your yeah, partner, exactly. okay. so yeah. that you are walking the journey. As you come to Labourhood, mm -hmm. you are already prepared mm -hmm. on which method you want to, to take. take. Yeah. Okay. So after we get your baby, we get the placenta out, we are able to support you with the method. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other way to, that we are ensuring access is that we are now uh, engaging with the community pharmacies, mm -hmm. optimizing pharmacy channels. Okay. And so we are training community pharmacies to be able to uh, avail the depot provera, yeah. both I am and subcutaneous, subcutaneous. Okay. what he's calling cyanopress. Cyanopress yeah. is a trade name, okay. but the actual component is DMPA, subcutaneous, and uh, I am. Mm -hmm. And so these commodities are now available even in the pharmacy, the, all the short term methods. Mm -hmm. So we are also relying on them to be able to bring these commodities closer mm -hmm. to the client. And the biggest question then would be is this? availability a cause for concern we'll be coming to that and especially to you who deals with adolescents and youth are they again we're using this uh, methods that are available and perhaps maybe their business should be about <laughs> fixing their future and all that so allow us to take a short break and then we come back to that on that very note okay